The wonderful thing about technology is whenever it works, man, it's beautiful. Whenever it doesn't, we struggle. Uh, shooting video and, and getting this stuff posted online works great as long as there's memory left on the iPad. But whenever it's full, sometimes we have to do a part two. So we're going to be doing a part two. So that explains our abrupt ending, and we're going to pick up word number four. <laughs> we're talking about what some of the Jonah's faulty thinking or some of the poor decisions he made. And the fourth thing he did was he was only interested in his nation and not God's world. And here's what we do. We, for example, John 3.16 says, for God so loved the United States, right? Nope. What does it say? For God so loved the world. And we have a problem. Our, our, we have this really narrow way of seeing the life. It, we, we look at it basically in, in terms of our region where we live and our people, our family, what affects us. God doesn't look at it that way. And Jonah made that mistake. He could only see Israel and what benefited them. God was concerned about the Assyrians, about the city of Nineveh. And so he wanted to save the whole city and all these people, that even though they weren't Jews. So the fifth thing is, uh, the, I guess the fifth one's really near and dear to my heart because I've got a couple teenagers at home. Uh, Jonah finally obeyed God, but he did it with a bad attitude. Uh, there, there was a lot of stomping his feet and and uh, and being being mad about it, kind of kind of one of those eye roll whatever things. Uh, we see that that over and over throughout Scripture that God cares about our heart. He cares about our attitude and our motivation, often more so than our obedience. Uh, there, there's this sense that if we do the right thing, but we do it for the wrong reason, we still messed up, right? It, it was still wrong. Attitude matters to God. That's right. And the sixth thing, Jonah resented. God's plan when it didn't make sense to it. And if you wait for God's plan to always make sense to you before you do it, you're going you're gonna to be finding yourself basically living your own life and leaving God out. I want you to listen to this. This is really telling about Jonah. Jonah chapter 3 verse 10 through chapter 4 verse 2. When God saw what they had done and how they, they had put a stop to their evil ways, talking about the, the people of Nineveh, the Assyrians, says he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry, so he complained to the Lord about it. So I want you to notice some of the feelings that Jonah expresses here. There are four things that, that he expresses. First of all, he, he expresses frustration. The, this change of plans greatly upset him. He was more than just a little bothered by the fact that God decided not to condemn and destroy these people. And then there was anger. The Bible says he not just he became angry, but he became very angry. He became irate. He was, he was literally physically upset with God. Third thing he did, he complained. Said he complained to the Lord about it. Have you ever done that? You ever complained to the Lord about the stuff that he's not doing well? Uh, and finally, uh, he became to a state of depression. Notice what he says in verse 3. This is what Jonah says to the Lord. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. And so he's upset with the Lord to the point of it's affecting, it's really bringing him down. He's discouraged and he's defeated and he just wants to give up. He doesn't want, if God's not going to do it his way, he's just done with it. Another thing we see from Jonah is th those emotions led to really a, a change in his viewpoint. Uh, he, he approached this really whole situation with resentment. He resented God's mercy and grace to others. Even though he'd been given a second chance, even though he'd been, you know, whenever he was disobedient, he was punished and he was brought back and God gave him that second chance, continued his mission, he did not want that to be offered to the people there in Nineveh. Uh, in verse 2, chapter 4, verse 2, uh, where it says he, he started to complain to the Lord about it. Well, here's his complaint. Didn't I say before I left home that you'd do this, Lord? That's why I ran away to Tarshish, right? So all of a sudden, his disobedience is God's fault. You made me do it. I knew that you were a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You're eager to turn back from destroying people. He had this sense that he's the only one that deserves that second chance. And, and any time that he saw, or in this case, when he saw God's mercy and, and grace toward the people of Nineveh, he didn't like that. He was resentful for that. They should be punished. I should be forgiven. Right. And it's, the, the language here is so telling. 
you're eager to turn back from destroying people. He, he understands who God is. He gets that God is a God of love and mercy and grace. And right now, in this moment, the very thing that's blessed him, he's, he's upset about. So. so as we get ready to shift gears here, we're going to look at four things to remember whenever things don't go our way. Really, four protective factors that keep us from falling into the same faulty thinking, that same mindset that led to really... Uh, uh, resentment and poor emotions that they made Jonah miserable yeah. and so we want to avoid that four things that uh, that help keep us from falling into that trap and the first one is this when when things don't go your way remember this God is God and you're not that when we we laugh at that but the fact is that's been man's always his biggest hang-up I want to be God of my life. I want to be the captain of my ship. I want to be the, the one who controls my fate. And the fact is, I am not God. He is God. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, The Lord replied to, jo to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about this? Who are you? Who are you, Jonah? We see that echoed with Job, right? So the first 37 chapters of Job, bad things have happened, and Job has, has really uh, laid out his grievances, and so have his friends, and so have his wife. And God gets ready to answer him. It's what Hannah calls uh, sassy God, right? In Job, in Job chapter 38, God gets ready to answer him. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourselves like a man. Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them, right? You want, to, you want to have an adult conversation? Let's have an adult conversation. And he asked him a series of questions. We're just going to look at the first one today. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. I'm always a, a, a bit, um, it makes me laugh a little bit when I hear people say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have to ask God these questions. And I'm thinking, really? You really think that's what's going to happen? Um, you know, I don't see us you know, having to call God on the carpet and him standing with hand and hat. Hat in hand goes back that up. Uh, God doesn't do that, okay? Remember, attitude matters. That's right. I don't think that's the attitude yeah, that he's right. going to. He's, he's gonna God, accept. and I'm not. That's a good thing to remember when things don't go my way. Second thing I need to remember is God is good even when I'm not. Mm -hmm. God is still good even when I'm not. Notice Jonah chapter four verse six. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there. So Jonah has, has gone out to the east side of the city. He kind of went up on the hill where he's overlooking the city. He, he makes a shelter to sit under while he waits to see what God's, what's going to happen. And I think he's still kind of hoping that God's going to, you know, remember and, and, and zap these folks. He's got, he's got uh, kind of a front row view to the destruction yeah. that has been prophesied yeah. at this point. And so he's, he's a, he knows what he thinks God's going to do, but he's kind of hoping that God's... Maybe going to carry out the prediction. So God arranges for a leafy plant to grow there, and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. And understand this, God does not always give us what we deserve. And I mean that in, in, the, in the sense of mercy. If we got what we deserve, um, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, in our lives, we, we'd be, what hope would we have? God is gracious and merciful, and he's nothing like me or you. Our unfaithfulness will never cause God to be unfaithful. He, will, he is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. He will always be good. He will always love us. He will always be faithful. And that's what he, I think, what he wants Jonah to see. And in, in your situations, when things are out of control or things aren't going the way you want them to, remember, God is still good. Mm -hmm. And he is still working the best for you. But you have to trust him in that and believe him in that. But there's a third thing that we need to remember. God's in control and we're not. Yeah. And we've kind of been around this whole issue a little bit, but but just as we're not God, we're also not in control. I, in fact, think about how many things in your life you actually control. That You're going to find, I think that list is pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, and notice what happens in Jonah 4 verses 7 and 8. But God also arranged for a worm. <laughs> he, arranged, he, he, he arranged for the, flood, the, the plant to give him shade. Then he also arranges for a worm. The next morning at dawn, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. He is really turning the pressure up, turning the heat up literally on his servant, on, his, on this prophet. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. And notice this, 
fatalistic attitude. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. The reality is God uses all of those uh, circumstances, all of those experiences that we have through life to, to grow us and to guide us. We actually have very little control yeah. of the circumstances. The only thing we control is our response to those circumstances. And our trust in the Lord. That's, a, that's it. That, I mean, that ultimately what, what should be the right response, whether it's a good circumstance or a bad circumstance, is trust in the Lord. That's right. In Jonah 4, 9, it says, Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to die. Jonah is not backing off of this. He still wants to be in control. He still wants to be calling the shots. But notice this, God's not backing down either. And, and not, it, if, you gotta, if you're going to have to try to be in control, and there are a lot of us that are control freaks. But notice I say us. Um, <laughs> If you're going to have to be in control, you're going to struggle a lot in your walk with the Lord. It kind of leads us to the fourth thing. Yeah. God's focus is always on what's, in, what's eternal, even if ours isn't. Yeah. Um, he is always looking. And what is eternal? There's only one thing that is not a thing on this planet is eternal, and that's people. That's us. That's it. And that's what God's concerned about. And, and that's what we see in verses 10 and 11. Then the Lord said, you feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quickly. But in Nineveh, but Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? And God's point there is, here are all these people. And it, it notice he even th throws in animals. I think sometimes we think God doesn't care about that. God does. They're part of his creation as well. But he, 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 Jonah basically, and, then, and we see really the heart of missions here. God loves people, and God values them above everything else. And God will go to great lengths to reach out to us. He will, he will, it, by his grace, extend his love further and further until that moment when we come to know him. We see Paul echo that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So we don't look at the troubles we can now see. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And when you're going through that thing that isn't going your way, when you're frustrated, when you're discouraged, remember that. Focus on the eternal. Focus on what really matters. Don't get caught up in things that are not important. I want to finish, I'm going to finish this morning with a, a, a line or a, a, the chorus from a Casting Crown song. Um, because I think it, it expresses what we're talking about here today. Uh, it says, I'll praise you in the storm and I will lift my hands. That you are who you are, no matter where I am. And every tear I've cried, you hold in your hand. You never left my side. And though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. And after all, that is the right response. When things don't go my way, what should I do? Follow him, take a tighter grip on his hand, and praise him that he's my God, that he's in control, that he is good, and that he's going to get me through. You're going to need this because there are going to be days when things don't go your way. Mm -hmm. Remember, God is in control, and God will see you through. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you again for this time that we've had to study your word through uh, some technological difficulties. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your patience. And I pray that the message that, that you've laid on our hearts has been a blessing to those who view it, to those who hear it. Lord, I ask now that as we're going through some storms, for some of us, uh, it's maybe just a little bit of a ripple. For some, this is maybe even a life-changing time that we're going through now. Uh, Lord, that wherever we are in that storm, we know that you're there. And I pray that you would help us to hold tightly to your hand, that we would praise you through this storm. Even whenever our lives are kind of turned upside down and our hearts are torn, that you're faithful and that you control eternity. We can't even control tomorrow, but you control eternity. Help us to remember that you're God, that you're good, that you're in control, and that your focus is of what's is on what's eternal, even though today may look really hopeless for us. I pray that our focus 
would be yours, that we would love people the way that you do, that we would do our job to fulfill the Great Commission. It's our job to know you absolutely, but it is equally our job to make you known. I pray we'd be creative in the ways that we do that, but that we would be faithful to always do it. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week and enjoy the celebrate Easter. Don't don't get discouraged because we can't meet. Our God is still worthy of our praise and worship. And so enjoy this week and we'll hopefully be doing some things to help you out with that. So take care and we'll see you later.